This is the beginning lecture that is an overview on geographic data models from GIS 215, GIS Data Models, a class offered at AB Tech. The book we use is called Modeling Our World, which is now in its second version from ESRI Press. As a brief introduction into geographic data models, just to give us an overview of what we'll be going over this semester, geographic information systems are all about the geographic information that we use with the GIS. If you remember from your introductory class in GIS, geographic information systems are used to make and to use geographic information. These layers of information, things like roads and streams and parcels and forest, all of these are layers of geographic information and they're at the heart of everything we do. They are based in geographic data models. So the data is what this class is all about and that's what we'll be talking about here in this overview. So a geographic data model, let's talk about models in general first. A model is an abstract and well-defined system of concepts. A model can be applied to almost anything. We may apply a model to better understand the spread of oil from the disaster in the Gulf last year. We may also try to apply a model to better understand the spread of swine flu across the United States over the past year or two. We can also model climate change. So really, a model helps us to define a set of vocabulary that we can use to describe and reason about things with a common set of terminology so we're all on the same page discussing something. So how about geographic data models? Well, geographic data models are data models in the same sense that they help us define a set of vocabulary for describing and reasoning about things, but geographic data models help us to define this vocabulary for describing and re reasoning about things that are located on the earth. GIS are built using formal models that help us to describe how things are located in space and really it's the foundation on which all geographic information systems are built. Most of what we're talking about in this class are digital geographic data models. These different types of data structures that allow us to store information in the computer. If you think back to geography before the digital age, there was a familiar model of geographic information related to geography all along. This was the map. Think of the hard copy map. The hard copy map is a scale model of reality that uses conventions and rules just like any models in a computer must use. The conventions and rules that we use on a hard copy map are things like map projections, different symbology for lines and points, as well as text. All of these help us to think about, reason about, answer questions about the reality that the map represents. We can answer questions like how far between two objects, or how long an object is, or maybe what states a river goes through, or what state is adjacent to another state. A map is a tool for communicating facts about geography in a visual manner. Maps help us to understand relationships, spatial relationships, relationships that might not even occur to us without being able to look at it on a map and see it in a visual context. So geographic data models work just like maps do because we know the rules of conventional map reading, things like blue lines or rivers, 
North is up oftentimes. North is off always facing the direction of the north arrow. Things like that. Geographic data models define their own sets of concepts and relationships, much like maps do, and they must be understood before you can expect to create or interpret your own data model. These concepts relate to how you model geographic information in your computer rather than is in a map or on paper. Two big data models we use that you should remember from the introductory class. One is the vector data model that's made up of point signs and polygons and used to model discrete types of features or phenomena in the real world. And then we have the raster data model that are made up of a gridded cell structure. These are two broad data models that, that we will study. Another uh, related term is data format. You will also often see these terms used interchangeably. Whereas a data model is a more broad, conceptual way of understanding the world around us, when you talk about a data format, a data format is the actual computer structure that we use to store and display the information digitally. So data formats, a data format is nothing more than a way to store and then display information in a computer environment. All data formats have advantages and disadvantages. Two familiar data formats that are not related to GIS are the Word document and the text document. Both of these data formats would allow you to, say, write a letter to your mother or father. They allow you to do some slightly different things, however. A Word document has many fancy formatting techniques. You can insert images, and you can do more things with it, whereas the text file is a much simpler data format. That doesn't mean one is better than the other. They're only better for a particular application. In GIS, oftentimes we want to use a text file because we don't want the overhead of opening a Word document. And oftentimes we're just storing coordinates so we don't need fancy formatting or inserting images. So no data format is better than another. They all have advantages and disadvantages. They've evolved over time as computers and software have evolved over time. So we're all familiar with those data formats. This semester, we'll be learning about many GIS data formats. These are ways of storing and displaying geographic information and exchanging information in a GIS. Geographic or GIS data formats are things like the ArcInfo coverage, the shapefile, the geodatabase, CAD data, keyhole markup language or the Google Earth format, many web services, and many, many more. Get ready for this semester. These are the types of spatial data formats or GIS data formats or geographic data formats that we'll be studying.